Hello guys. This is Ani What Ifs. Welcome to our channel. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was son of Ra. The sun goddess of sun. Here is short summary. Naruto is the son of the Egyptian goddess of the sun. He doesn't know this until his team's mission to the land of snow. There he meets his mother Ra, and she jump starts his godly DNA. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Our story stars in a land covered in snow, with five large panels that look to be covered in ice standing tall. A small hut could be seen in the middle of this field. A man dressed in some kind of armor was walking towards this hut, as a woman with black hair, fair skin and light blue eyes stared at him with cold eyes. This man is Dodo Kazuhana, and the woman is his niece Koyuki Kazuhana. Dodo walking into the hut slid what looked like a crystal into a slot and smiled when a loud humming could be heard. Taking several steps back he looked around expecting riches to appear, but got very angry when the five panels just started to glow, and slowly the ice and snow started to melt. Snarling he said this is the treasure. Koyuki watching all of this said spring. Snarling he turned to say something to her when a loud masculine voice said Koyuki. Both people turned and Koyuki gasped spotting our hero a 13-year-old boy with a head full of spiky blonde hair, blue eyes, tan skin and three whisker-like marks on each side of his face. Dodo Snarling asked you just don't know when to quit do you Brad? The boy said I don't ever give up. Dodo Snarling went through hand signs and said Black Dragon Blizzard Jutsu. He then sent a dragon-shaped attack at the boy and it launched the boy backwards. Koyuki screamed Naruto. The boy getting back to his feet said it's take more than that you defeat me you shithead. Dodo Snarling asked is the device messing up? Naruto running towards Dodo blinked when said man was in front of him and connected a jaw-shattering punch to his face. This kicked up a huge cloud of white smoke because it was snow. When the smoke cleared a huge hole could be seen showing the water that had been underneath the ice. Koyuki having seen this gasped. Dodo turning back to her was walking forward planning on killing her when he suddenly turned around as a black-haired boy with blazing red eyes charged towards him with a lightning-covered hand. He jumping cried out Chidori. Dodo's armor activated and tried to absorb the attack. It did absorb most of it, but in the process his armor cracked. The boy was then kicked by Dodo and collided with a panel. He sliding down said his armor is cracked. It's all up to you now Naruto. Dodo snarling turned back to Koyuki and said I'm gonna kill you bitch. Koyuki hearing this was ready to accept her death. Naruto sinking lower and lower into the water, had his eyes closed as he wondered what the hell was taking the nine tails so long. He blinked finding himself no longer under the water. Instead he was inside some kind of temple. This temple looked ancient and for some reason brand new at the same time. He looking around could see pictures carved into the walls, but both sides were different. One side had a strange red symbol, while the other side had what looked like women with animal parts. This confused the hell out of him. Shaking his head he stood up and decided to find the center of this temple, as maybe it would let him know where he was. Be walking past by many more carvings, most showing a woman with animal parts or some kind of awesome looking creature fighting alongside a human. He then passed by two symbols, one being a upside down red triangle, while the other kinda looked like a flame. These two symbols were the last carvings as he was now in the center of the temple. His eyes widened into circles spotting a gorgeous woman sitting in the middle of the temple. This woman had long flowing red, orange and yellow hair that almost moved like flames. Her skin was flawless and pale. Her face was heart-shaped and made most of the women in his village look like shit. Her eyes were closed so he could see the thick black makeup she had around each eye. Her ears weren't round like his, instead they were pointed and lovely. Her lips, which had a layer of red lipstick on it, were plump and lovely. Her body was like an hergless as she had the perfectly balanced body. She was dressed in a black, white and grey kimono that did nothing to hide her impressive figure. Naruto realizing that this gorgeous woman could be an enemy or the Kaiubi in disguise reached for a kunai or shuriken. But blinked as he didn't have a weapon on him or anything besides his clothes for that manner. Gulping he dropped into a fighting stance and was about to ask who she was when she opened her eyes to reveal pools of yellow with her pupils being a mix of red and orange. She locking eyes with him shocked him by smiling. She then spoke and her voice was like silk. She had said Naruchan my precious child. This statement shocked the hell out of Naruto, before he narrowed his eyes and growled out, not fooling for this shit again lady. Get the hell on. The woman sighing said I assure you I am not trying to lure you into a false sense of security, nor am I trying to pull the will over your eyes. I am truly your mother and I can prove it. Naruto having a dubious look on his face crossed his arms and said show me this supposed proof. The woman nodding snapped her fingers and Naruto blinked as the wall started showing him a video. His eyes widened spotting the events of his birth, not only revealing who his father was, but the reason the Kaiubi attacked the village. He then watched as his father sealed the fox inside of him, ignoring her begging him not to do so and to seal it inside of her. Naruto huffing said, that doesn't prove anything. 
She chuckled and said your true birthmark is the star-shaped mark on her your left shoulder, and your name in kanji means maelstrom not fishcake. Also you have my legendary temper, which also comes with my skills at pranks. Naruto blinked as no one, not even the old man knew about his true birthmark as he kept it hidden. His eyes widened as he with a tremble in his voice, ask you're really my? She nodded and smiled when he glomped her and started to cry into her kimono. She wrapping her arms around him rubbed soothing circles into his back and said I'm so sorry my precious maelstrom your stupid bastard father ignored my wishes and sealed that mangy fox inside of you. Naruto crying into her kimono sniffled out why am I just meeting you and why didn't anyone tell me. She answered with because it took this long for my true body to reform and I have no clue why Kakashi nor anyone else never told you but believe me I will find out. Naruto hearing the word true body blinked and asked what do you mean true body. She smiling down at him said baby most people knew me as Kashina Uzumaki, the red hot bloody pepper or the Uzumaki death goddess. In reality that was only a pseudo form. My true body is Ra and I'm an ancient Egyptian goddess of the sun. I since my creation have gained several more domains, including flames or fire of any kind, water and ice, lightning and thunder, and nature. Naruto had wide eyes learning that his mom was a goddess. He then blinked and asked what does that mean for me. She sending him a smile said, it means I need to awaken your godly blood and you have the Mokuten, Hanten and the Enten. Naruto's eyes nearly popped hearing this. She then asked did you notice the carvings in the temple. He nodded and she said good as I have recently discovered two more domains of mine and the carvings on the wall depict them. The first domain, the one showing women with animalistic traits, is called Pokerls. Naruto blinked and asked what's a Pokerl. She smiled and explained it to him and giggled when he blushed brightly. She then said the second are called Digimon. She then predicting his question explained what a Digimon was to him. He now understanding asked what does this have to do with me. She smiled and said baby I discovered these two new domains through my restored connection to you. This means that you most likely have the central digital core inside of you. This means you my precious maelstrom have every single Digimon inside of you making you the most powerful Digimon in existence. You also have the potential to dig evolve yourself. I'm going to try and help you activate this part of you so you can finish this mission and have an ace up your sleeve for the upcoming Chunin exams. You also have the perfect Pokerl DNA helix, meaning you are essentially a Pokerl. Not only are you a Pokerl, but you're the Pokerl. Naruto confused asked what do you mean the Pokerl? She giving him a motherly smile said baby you are the ultimate Pokerl as you have the DNA of every single Pokerl in all of time in every dimension. This makes your potential limitless. If what I'm trying to do right now works, you'll be able to evolve to as many forms as possible and even achieve at the very least 10 legendary forms. Naruto confused asked what's a legendary. His mom sighed and then explained what a legendary was. Naruto with stars for eyes asked what are you trying to do. She smiled and said flood your chakra pathways with my divine chakra and override the human DNA inside of you, allowing this to happen. Naruto blinked and titled his head to the side. He then asked is what you're trying to do gonna hurt? Ashina squealing on the inside at the absolutely adorable thing her son had just did said no baby, as you'll be unconscious in your reshaping mindscape, I'm gonna temporarily take over so that your body can adjust and reshape itself to suit your needs. Naruto smiled hearing this and said okay mom. She giggling set him down and covered him with a blanket as his blue eyes slowly closed. She kissed him on the middle of his forehead and said sleep tight my little maelstrom, mama is about to get a princess to fall hard for you. She then gained a very serious look on her face as she added, and make a certain Achiha jealous. She then vanished from the temple as it changed into a beautiful heavily forested clearing, with several animals walking around, or in the case of the snake slithering around. In the real world Naruto's body suddenly exploded in a brilliant burst of light. This light shined through the ice making the advancing dodo turn around. Kakashi having just arrived with Sakura was looking down wondering what was going on. Suddenly a figure shot out of the water and landed in front of Sasuke's down form. This figure quickly became visible and Kakashi shit several bricks. Standing in front of Sasuke, radiating immense power was none other than Kashina Uzumaki, otherwise known as the Uzumaki Death God. Kashina ignoring the palpable fear rolling off of Kakashi in waves, set her eyes on Dodo and said good my conversation with Sachi-kun didn't take too much time. Sakura and Koyuki confused wondered who this lady was and who was her Sachi. Kakashi on the other hand shit even more bricks as this wasn't just an illusion and Kashina was really in front of him and she had told Naruto what he didn't know. Dodo snarling asked who are you bitch and where did that stupid brat go? Kashina hearing this said my son isn't a stupid brat you arrogant trash and as for who I am. She lifting up her hand watched as thick roots came out of the ground and wrapped around Dodo tightly. She then with venom in her voice said it doesn't matter as you're about to die as I'm about to perfect and demonstrate my child's third original jutsu, this one not meant to deal with perverts. 
She then snapped her fingers, and everyone gasped when several small blue flames appeared and started to circle the trap dodo. Kishina closing her eyes said face judgment and perish for your sins. Yuzumaki Hijutsu. Combination Jutsu. Legend of the Ghost Rider Jutsu. Everyone's eyes widened when the flames combined to form a skeletal figure dressed in a leather biker jacket, jeans and chains. This figure had a blue flaming head and blue flaming eyes. This figure looked eyes with Dodo, and suddenly the corrupt man started to scream as his body slowly but surely started to turn into smoldering ash. When the jutsu ended, Kashina dropped the jutsu and inspecting the results whistled and said Sachi-kun's jutsu is definitely an air anchor above jutsu. She then turning to the wide-eyed Koyuki smiled and said pleasure to meet you Koyuki, it seems as my Sachi is quite smitten with you, unlike his fake crush on that pink-haired thing standing by Kakashi. Koyuki blinked and then asked who are you and who is the Sachi you're talking about. Kashina giggled and said why none other than my little ball of sunshine Naruto Uzumaki, prince and heir of the Uzumaki clan. As for who I am, my name is Kashina, but you can call me Ra. She then smiled as Koyuki's eyes widened and a blush quickly hit the woman's face. Kashina was easily able to ignore the shocked and slightly hurt, feeling she could feel coming from Sakura. She then rounding on the now terrified Kakashi with a sickly sweet smile, said now then I have some questions for you Kakashi-kun, and you're gonna answer them, or I'm gonna castrate you with a dull rusty kunai. Kakashi hearing this very real threat became so pale he was starting to blend in with the snow. A week later and Team 7 was almost back to Konoha. Sasuke like usual was brooding as he thought of ways to get stronger. Kakashi was reading his smut, but you could tell he wasn't absorbed in said book. Sakura was actually sulking as she was still mulling over what Kashina had revealed about her plan B. She was shocked that Naruto's crush on her was completely and utterly false. Naruto himself was starting to exhibit some traits of his new shared domains with his mother. Like for instance, his face had changed from chubby and almost tomato-like to being slim, angular and slightly heart-shaped. His formerly dark blue eyes had lightened to the point that they were almost the same color as the sky. His hair had actually grown past his headband and now hung to his shoulders. Said hair had changed from the sunshine blonde everyone was used to into a loving red with a few black streaks. His skin had also lightened to the point that he was now fair-skinned. He also now had a red triangle that was pointing down that was surrounded by three smaller black triangles on each side. This tattoo was now in the middle of his forehead. The rest of his body had yet to change, well, except for his muscles had become more compact. Naruto was reading over the scroll Koyuki had made him sign. A blush was on his face as apparently she had forced him to sign a marriage contract between himself and her, and this contract was the only way Snow, Correction Spring would open trade relations with Konoha. Putting the scroll away he put his hands behind his head and smiled as Koyuki had given him a set of chakra armor to wear instead of his orange jumpsuit. She had also taken him shopping not wanting him to basically be a beacon for his enemies to hone in on. Now he was wearing black sleeveless shirt that she had his custom whirlpool crafted on the back. His arms was covered by the chakra armor that was being fed a constant stream of his own chakra to make it stronger. He had on blood red fingerless gloves on that had the symbol his mother had called the digital biohazard symbol. It was one big black equilateral triangle over a smaller black equilateral triangle that was pointing down. On the left and right of the first triangle was two even smaller black equilateral triangles. She had informed him that this symbol along with his new tattoo were very important for some reason. When he had asked her she had giggled and said he'd find out later. He had on a pair of long black pants that were rolled up around his feet as she didn't get him any shoes for some reason. His mom had actually explained why she didn't get any shoes as apparently his skin had become as tough as diamonds to cut. This had made him smirk as he didn't have shoes weighing him down anymore. He did have several weight and gravity seals on him though, as Kashina had decided he was too slow and not strong enough. She had fixed this with seals though. She had also helped him perfect and learn his jutsu. He smirked as his jutsu had four levels now, with the first level being ranked A by his mom. The other three were S rank, and all four were considered assassination jutsu. Naruto then cut his eyes to Kakashi being tired and fed up with his training of Sasu alone. Stopping and gaining the attention of the rest of Team 7, Naruto said Kakashi-sensei this is your absolute last chance. Train me. Kakashi sighing said no Naruto. Get your chakra under control and then I'll think about training you. Naruto hearing this pursed his lips and said alright then. He then continued walking already planning on getting someone else to train him. He was sure Iruka or the old man had an idea on who to train him. An hour later after checking in and getting the week off Naruto was exploring his new home, as his mom had informed him of the home she and his father had left him. It was very big, and Naruto was pretty damn sure he'd be able to fit at least 30 people into the home, before having to move some people to the other homes on the estate. He finding the master bedroom smiled and picked up the picture of his parents. He didn't really care about Minato, but his mom was now in his life and very important to him. 
He setting the picture down decided it was time for some Raymond. Walking out of his new home he was on his way to Ichiraku Raymond to get the food of the gods from his second favorite old man and his sweet as a cherry pie daughter. He ignored how the civilians sent withering glares at him as absolutely nothing could get him down. Arriving at his favorite stand he entered and took his usual seat. He then with a big smile on his face said Tucci let me get 10 bowls of the Naruto special. Tucci looking at the changed Naruto instantly recognized his favorite customer and said, you got it Naruto. Naruto beaming noticed the lack of a certain waitress and asked where's A.M. Chan. Tucci set out on a date. She should be back any moment if I know her. Naruto confused shrugged and started to play with his cool new armor. Seconds later A.M. Ichiraku walked into the stand a pissed off look on her face as she said stupid pervert. Naruto having just been given his first bolt blinked and asked what's wrong A.M. Chan. A.M. blinked hearing the voice of her favorite customer. Turning she smiled and asked when did you get back Naruto-kun. The smiling back said I got back a few hours ago and decided to come get some of the best food in the world made by the prettiest girl in the entire world. AM beamed hearing the praise and kissing Naruto on the cheek said, you always know just how to make me beam. She then went to helping her father with Naruto's food. Said boy used to getting kisses like that from AM actually started to think about the very slim pickings for girlfriends in the village. He didn't like Sakura like that and Ino was too far up Sasuke's ass for him to like. Hinata was his creepy stalker and he didn't really like her that much. This left the bun-haired girl he saw training with the green wearing fruitcake guy. He then remembered that she seemed to look at the Hayuga boy on her team like Sasuke's fangirls did him. This meant she most likely had a crush on the Hayuga. Sighing Naruto figured out he was out of luck when it came to women or females in Konoha and had better try his luck outside of the village. A.M. hearing his sigh blinked and asked what's wrong Naruto-kun. Naruto said I just realized that my best shot at getting a girlfriend is only if they're not from this village. A.M. frowning at his logic and knowing a lot of females who would love to be with him as he was the perfect boyfriend material said, I don't see that Naruto-kun as many of the females I know, me included would love to have you as a boyfriend, as one you're so kind and caring, two you're handsome and three you're not a pervert. That last one alone could get you date with over half of the women in Kanoha alone. Naruto blinking asked you would go out with me A.M.-chan. A.M. nodding said sure would and I'd be willing to share knowing that guys like you come around once in a lifetime. I'd also spoil you rotten with my love and affection. Naruto with a smile on his face said thanks A.M. Chan. You just gave me the perfect idea. A.M. quirking an eyebrow asked what is it. Naruko I smiling said there's a lot of women older than me that need a good boyfriend like me and I'm more than happy to help them out. He then jumping out of his chair and slapping down a lot of money said, but first I need to talk to either Aruka or the old man about getting me a better sensei, as Kakashi refused to train me and only focuses on Sasuke team. He then left the stand missing the face palm of AM and the sweat drop of Tucci. AM shaking her head said he's so cute but damn if he isn't dense. Tucci chuckling said don't worry AM I'm sure you're the first older woman he asks out. AM blushing said dad. Naruto now in the Hokage's office was watching with a happy smile as the old man chewed Kakashi out. He blanched though when Saratobi said Kakashi had a cure punishment for such blatant abuse of power as to catch Tora until all three genin on Team 7 are jonin. Naruto hearing this said hold on old man no need to be so mean. Kakashi Baka can just give me some jutsu scrolls or something like that. Saratobi hearing this looked at the now thanking Kami Kakashi and said alright then Kakashi you are to give Naruto kun 20 jutsu scroll of each affinity. Kakashi hearing this blinked and nodded as the other choice was chasing and trying to catch that damn cat. Saratobi then dismissed the man and said now for the matter of your new sensei Naruto-kun. Naruto was about to say something when the link he shared with his mom became active and his mom told him that he was going to need a Kinoichi as a sensei as his body was going to go through some changes sooner or later. Blinking he said Jiji how many Kinoichi do you have that can teach me? Saratobi quirking an eyebrow asked it depends. Naruto curious asked on. Saratobi asked if you want retired or not. Naruto said, an active duty Kanoichi would be nice. Saratobi nodding already had three people on his mind, with one being Anko. He didn't want to do the last one though, as Naruto was already bad enough, but if Anko started to train him, he feared for not only the villagers, but the entire world. The other two were Kurinai and Yugao. He didn't know if Kurinai would be able to teach Naruto anything as she was mainly a Jinjutsu specialist, while Yugao would have to take time off from her busy Anbu schedule. Come to think of it, Yugao had been taking a lot of missions lately, and Saratobi knew it wasn't to buy anything expensive. He with his elderly wisdom, remembered that Yugao had been in a relationship with his most sickly jonin, one Hei Jeko. Come to think of it hadn't his foolish son Asuma informed him that Hei had broken up with Yugao. He then nodded and said alright Naruto-kun report to training ground 6 in 2 hours your new sensei will meet you there. 
Naruto hearing this being Den was about to leave when Sirotobi tossed him a huge wad of cash and said here go buy yourself something, as this is your cut of the money from the wave mission that Tezuna-san is just now giving Konoha. Turns out he decided to pay Team 7 the amount of a triple S rank mission. You have in your hands Naruto cut over 6 million dollars. Naruto nearly choked hearing how much money he had just been tossed. Nodding his vanished to go buy something he had always wanted. Well several things he had always wanted. Naruto walking into the only music store Konoha had and the best in all of Fire County according to many sources. He walked over to the golden guitar he had wanted since he was three and finally grabbed it. Walking over to the counter he laid down the $20,000 the price said. The woman easily recognizing him, not because of the Kaiubi, but because she was a worshipper of Ra or Kishina-sama to her most devoted followers. She instantly said Naruto-sama. Naruto confused asked why did you say Sama? The woman moving some of her long brown hair, revealed the tattoo of a golden ankh and said I am a worshipper of your mother Naruto-sama, it is my duty to know and notice the only child of my mistress. Naruto sweat dropped hearing this not knowing anyone still worshipped his mom. He shaking his head said okay strange lady I'm paying for this guitar now and leaving. The woman hearing this looked at the money Naruto had laid down and pushed it back towards him and said no Naruto-sama, I cannot accept this money as it is my honor to be of service to you. A sweat drop appeared on the back of Naruto's head as he asked, you do realize you're running a business right? She nodding said I am well aware Naruto-sama, but my business is very profitable, thus I can afford to give you things from my store Naruto-sama. The sweat drop got bigger as Naruto said okay I'm gonna leave now and go buy that cool sword I saw the other week. He then left the shop. The woman once he was gone swooned and said I was of service to Naruto-sama. I must go get his tattoos placed on my body this instantly in a show of support for Kishina-sama's only child. She then walked out from behind the counter and walked to her shop door. Flipping the sign closed she grabbed her purse and said, I'm off. She then left the shop. Naruto having entered the weapon shop with a cool sword was happy that it was still there. Grabbing it he walked to the counter where a rather cute teenage civilian clerk sat. He coughing to get her attention as she was reading some trashy romance novel, blinked when she looked at him and literally squealed like one of Sasuke's accursed fangirls. He was then glomped by the girl who said oh my ra, it's actually you Naruto-sama. Ra said you would enter my shop to buy that katana she had me forge so long ago, but I didn't think it would actually happen. Naruto now once again having a sweat dropped, wondered just how many people actually worshipped his mom in this village. Two hours later Naruto with his new sword sitting on his hip, had no clue why he didn't leave it home with his guitar, but had the strangest feeling, even though he had never used a sword before he was going to be terrifyingly good with this one. Shrugging he walked into the training ground and blinked spotting his new sensei yet. Shrugging as this gave him some time to think about which older woman he would try asking out first. He could ask out Kiba's hot sister, but then he'd most likely have to deal with Kiba's whining, and he didn't feel like dealing with that. This sadly also knocked Kiba's equally hot mom out. How about Shikamaru's hot mom? Wait she was still married to Shikamaru's lazy dad. He had a pout on his face as kept trying to come up with women to ask out on dates. He was so caught in his thoughts he failed to notice his new sensei arrive in a swirl of leaves. The thing was that she wasn't alone. She had three other people with her. Yugao having been told by the Hokage that she wasn't going to have any Anbu mission for a while, but would instead find an eager student to train in training ground 6, had sighed and went to her usual spot meeting her three friends there also. They had after hearing what she had going on decided to tag along as Kurinai really couldn't do anything as her team were all doing their own training, even Hinata. Anko had tagged along as she was just bored. Hana was in the same boat. All four females blinked spotting Naruto who was still engrossed in his thoughts. Yugao sighing spotting one of the most hyperactive but nice kids she had ever met, coughed to get his attention. It didn't seem to work so she tried again. To no avail. She getting fed up walked over with her friends having smirks on their faces and thumped Naruto. This seemed to snap him out of it and his blue eyes instantly landed on her. Said blue eyes wide in spotting her and she wondered why. Naruto looking at his new sensei, thought he had just died and gone to heaven spotting the simply divine woman in front of him. She had a heart-shaped face that was framed by her spiky long purple hair. Her black eyes shined with a power and intelligence Naruto couldn't fathom. She had a thin layer of light pink lipstick on her perfect lips and she was dressed in a simple black shirt and a pair of black tights. On her back was a sword that he could easily tell had seen a lot of action. Did he forget to mention even with a loose-fitting black shirt she had on he could make out at least a cup breast and she most likely had an ass to die for. Yugao quirked an eyebrow as her new student just stared at her dumbstruck. She asked are you the student Hokage-sama told me about. Naruto slowly nodding was making plans to thank the old man for scoring him such a beautiful sensei later. He hadn't even noticed the snickering Anko, the smirking Hana, or the amused Kurinai. Yugao ignoring her three friends said my name is Yugao Yuzuki and from this day forward I am your sensei. 
you will obey my commands, and hopefully I can make you into a powerful shinobi that apparently Kakashi Senpai was failing to do. Naruto nodded hearing her but at the same time not hearing her. She rolled her eyes as this is the exact reason why she didn't want any students in the first place, the males would just stare at her like Naruto was, well not really, they would stare at her like she was a piece of meat, Naruto was staring at her like she was gift from Akami. She noticing the sword on Naruto's hip blinked and said, your file said nothing about you using a sword, nor did Hokage Sama or Kakashi Senpai mention it. Naruto hearing this seemed to snap out of his awe and said, that's because I just got it today and I was going to leave it at home, but something just didn't feel right leaving it. So I brought it. Yu Gao hearing this blinked as this was how she felt about leaving her sword at home and wondered if Naruto was a natural born Kenjutsu user like her. She said alright then, in order to get a red on you, we will have a light spar. Well it will be light for me, you on the other hand are to come at me with the intent to kill. She then dropped into a stance and gained a dark look on her face that promised pain. She with an evil smile said begin. The absolute worst beating in all of Naruto's 12, almost 13 years of life then happened, and by the time it ended Naruto was barely standing, covered in slowly healing cuts and gashes. Most of his shirt and upper armor had been torn to shreds, and both of his hand were covered in his own blood. His headband lay forgotten to the side, as Yugao had knocked it off within the first five minutes of the battle. This had let his longer hair come free covering most of his face. One of Naruto's eyes was shut and his lip was even busted, but he still had his new sword in his hand. Standing across from him was Yugao with a not impressed look on her face, while her friends was shocked at how brutal she was being against Naruto. Yugao looking at Naruto asked is this it? I expected so much more from the great hero of Wave and Spring. She then giving him a look he had been given by so many others said, I can't believe I wasted my time on someone so weak. Naruto hearing this felt an unholy and primal rage fill his body, remembering the villagers saying things like that to him when he was younger, and how so many people thought that him being a genin was fluke. Now completely furious, he had failed to notice that the tattoo on his forehead was actually glowing. This fury quickly manifested itself as a massive aura of energy that was without a doubt not chakra. Killing intent then came barreling out of him as he grabbed his sword once more. He staring Yugao directly in the eyes, sent shivers of unrestrained fear down her spine as the power in his eyes was literally visible. Naruto then growled out I'll show you. I'll show all of you. He then screamed and it seemed like the intensity of the sun started to shine down on Naruto. He still screaming said get ready. It's time for round 12. He then literally vanished and only years of instinct allowed Yugao to avoid being sliced in half by a now coated in hellish blue flames sword of Naruto. She quickly had to follow this dodge, with several more, and found herself regretting pushing Naruto this far. She jumping into the air knew that she needed to end this, or one of her friends might get hurt. Landing with several clones of herself she said I have to knock you out now, but don't worry you passed my test. She and her clones then said Kenjutsu. Dance of the Moon Blade. They all sent attacks at Naruto who to her shock appeared with his own clones. Naruto still with furious eyes said Kenjutsu. Howling thunder slash. The eyes widened when he and his clones slashed and sent several literally howling blue attacks at Yugao's attack and to her shock not only clashed with it but overpowered hers and came straight towards her. She closed her eyes expecting to be sliced to find pieces of Yugao. When she didn't feel anything a few minutes later she opened her eyes and gained wide eyes as a normal Naruto was now grinning at her. She confused at why he was grinning blinked when Anko said Yugao you might want to look in a mirror. Yugao confused used her sword as a mirror and gasped. There on each side of her face was three cuts each, giving her whisker-like marks, identical to the ones Naruto had. Naruto feeling himself lose consciousness chuckled and said don't you ever underestimate me. Any of you. His head then slumped as he fell face first into the cold hard ground. Yugao hearing what he had said smirked and said I think I might like having a student. Anko no longer bored asked you do know he might be pissed at the way you acted when he wakes up right. Yugao shrugging said when he wakes up I'll apologize and if that doesn't work pray to Kami or whoever the civilians pray to now that he doesn't seek revenge. On looking at the damage done to Naruto's attire and pushing her blush down as Naruto was now putting out a strong scent of alpha asked did you have to completely destroy his clothes and was it necessary to cover his hands in his own blood. Yugao putting her sword back on her back walked over to her down student and said okay maybe I went a little overboard. Her and I giving her a plain look said a little. Yugao he's still covered in various cuts and gashes that are still slowly healing, you sliced open both of his palms four times each and ruined his clothes, which he will no doubt have to toss, as they can't be worn anymore, with the pants being covered in his blood and the shirt being nothing but rags. Yugao sweat dropping said okay maybe Hokage-sama never learns about my little test for him. She then heard a voice that made her pale say too bad I already know Joan and Yugao Yazuki. She and the other three females slowly turned to find a furious Iritobi Hiruzen, giving the four-seasoned Kinoichi a glare that would make even the Kaiubi whimper. 
Yu Gao now very terrified stuttered out Hokage-sama what are you doing here? Be giving her glare said I came to see how my surrogate grandson and true inheritor of the will of fire liked his sensei, and to my surprise, I come to find the two of them locked in a little spar that makes the Yandame's battle with the fourth rakage look like a temper tantrum from a spoiled brat. Said spar ended up with him knocked out and most likely requiring a trip to Kanoha's hospital. Yu Gao now pouring down with sweat said it's not what it looks like Hokage-sama. Her sentence was cut off as Saratobi said be silent Yu Gao. You and I will be discussing your test in my office. Be then rounding on the petrified Anko, Hana and Kurinai said, I will be also having discussions with you three for not stopping the supposed spar once you three saw how far it got. Now one of you escort Naruto-kun to the hospital and tell them is a code orange. Be then turned back to Yugao who was now even more pale as she knew what a code orange meant. Saratobi said now then come Yugao. Be then vanished in a swirl of leaves while a very terrified Yugao followed in her own shushin. Anko realizing what Yugao had done started cursing as the old man was likely going to have her chasing that damn cat for the next six months or something like that. Hana Pale said I'm gonna go home and have a cup of tea. She then got the hell out of there simply terrified of the upcoming talk with the Hokage. Kurinai groaning at what Yugao had caused walked over to the unconscious Naruto and picked him up. She was pleasantly surprised at how light he was. She then grabbing his headband looked down and thought that he was kinda cute in that raw type of way. She then vanished in a swirl of leaves to take Naruto to the hospital. In the Hokage's office Yugao was being chewed out like never before by Siratobi. The man was very pissed at the asinine thing she had done for several reasons. The first was because of the stupid and brutal test she had given to his grandson in all but blood. The second was because she was supposed to be a jonin and knew better than to do something so stupid. Third was his grandson was the only reason her way Kanoha had a peace and trade treaty with the Land of Spring, fourth well the fourth reason was the same as the first and he just felt like he needed to say it again. He winding up said you'd better pray to Kami or whoever the civilians worship now that he forgives you and still wants you as his sensei or you'll be chasing Tor until you're my age. Yu Gao hearing this threat felt a very real shiver go through her body as that was long time chasing Tor. She was about to say something when he said you're dismissed and send an anko. Yu Gao nodding walked out of the room to find a waiting Anko. Yu Gao not being able to hide her fear said your turn. Anko spotting how pale Yu Gao was started to curse before heading inside of the room. Anko would come out an hour later just as pale as Yu Gao and looking at the waiting Hana said your turn. Hana gulping walked inside of the room terrified out of her mind. With good reason as two out of her three friends looked like they had just seen ghost or death. Her and I at the hospital with Naruto watched as the nurses finally wheeled the boy into a room. Her and I walking forward asked how is he? The nurse ending a strong glare at Kurinai said I don't know who attacked him, but if they're ever brought to the hospital, I'm going to personally poison their IV and feed them laxatives. Naruto-kun's hands are very raw and he's gonna be wearing bandages on them for the next month at least. He's completely out of chakra, which has never happened before. His cuts and gashed have been covered but are still slowly healing, which is strange considering his condition and how quickly he normally heals. Kurinai flinched hearing all of this and asked is he awake? The nurse eyeing said sadly he is, so we had to strap him down to keep him from trying to escape. Gurunai knowing that she had some time to kill before she was called before the Hokage said can he have visitors. The nurse nodding said sure. Gurunai hearing this walked inside of the room and spotted Naruto strapped to the bed covered in bandages. His blue eyes locked on her and she watched the same look he had when he first saw Yuga appear. She wondered why he looked at her like that. Naruto once again finding himself in the company of a gorgeous woman wondered if this was karma finally coming around. Kurinai ignoring this asked how are you feeling. Naruto blinking said like I went toe to toe with another member of the seven swordsmen of the mist and won. Kurinai quirking an eyebrow asked you went toe to toe with a member of the swordsmen of the mist. He nodding said, I'm not surprised no one has heard of team seven's first mission outside of the village yet. He smiling said if you unstrap me I'll be glad to tell you the story. Kurinai rolling her eyes said I'm not removing the straps. Naruto pouting said fine. He then started telling her the story of Team 7's first mission outside of the village, and by the time he had finished, he hadn't even noticed that the straps had actually been removed by a nurse, finding all of his wounds finally healed. Kurinai having been enthralled in his story asked what happened to Haku's body and what did you do with Zabuza's sword. Naruto smiling said I buried Haku's body in a clearing not far from Tazuna's home so that I can always remember the person who gave me the true reason to become Hokage and get as strong as possible. As for Zabuza's sword, I had a spare sealing scroll, so I sealed it in it and hid the scroll somewhere in my former apartment. Actually it's now hidden in my new home. I should probably find someone to give it to. Gurunai amazed by the story asked why don't you use it yourself. Naruto said because it weighs more than I do and lifting up almost tired me out. Gurunai hearing this giggled and Naruto swooned as her laugh sounded like an angel's laugh. Gurunai noticing this asked why are you staring at me like that. 
Naruto blushed and said I have no clue what you're talking about. Gurunai rolling her eyes glanced at the clock and knew it was her time to face the wrath of the Hokage. Getting up she said well I have to go now, but it was nice talking with you. Naruto hearing this gained wide eyes and before his mind could stop him he cried out wait. She turned to him and asked what is it. Naruto blushing once more decided to go for it and asked would you maybe kinda like to go out for some dinner or lunch sometime. Gurunai blinked several times and gained wide eyes as Naruto had just asked her out. Her mind quickly started having in small scale war trying to figure out if she should or not. One side wanted to turn him down because of how much younger than her he was. The other side wanted to say yes, as he was kind boy and rather cute, plus the story he had just told her was amazing and captured her attention. One last side, agreeing with the side wanting to say yes, figured that if she went out on date with him the hokage would go easy on her. Naruto looking at her was wondering why she hadn't responded yet. Kurinai coming a decision smiled and said sure. Be hearing her say yes, smiled brightly and said awesome. I'll pick you up tomorrow and I promise we'll go somewhere besides Ichirakus. He then with his returned energy ran out of the room with a bright and happy smile on his face. Kurinai giggling said he didn't even find out where I lived. Shook her head as she now had to face the music as the Hokage was most likely waiting for her. The next day Naruto walking towards training ground 7 was ready for some training with Yugao, so then he could catch lunch with Kurinai. Just thinking about the gorgeous black-haired woman made his face break out into a huge smile. Arriving at the training ground he blinked spotting Yugao already there. Yugao spotting him gulped as this was the moment of truth and would decide if she was going to be chasing Tor until her 60s. Naruto walking up to her asked what's on the menu for today Yugao sensei. Hearing him call her sensei made Yugao feel a lot of relief and asked you still want me as your sensei. Naruto quirked an eyebrow and said of course. Ask but what about yesterday? Naruto giving her a plain look said yesterday was the worst ass kicking in my 12 years of life, but it was also very cool as I finally found out how I stack up against an elite jonin. Kakashi Baka only ever trained Sasu team, so I never knew where I stood. He then bowing said for that I am grateful Yugao sensei and I promise to obey your commands and learn as much as I can from you. Yugao hearing this smiled as this meant she didn't have to chase that damn cat for the next 60 years. Laughing she said, you don't have to bow to me Naruto-kun. You did very well yesterday, I only pushed you because I needed to know your resolve. Naruto stopping his bow and asked how was it. She giving him a dazzling smile said I'm gonna enjoy having you as my student. Naruto blushed at her smile. She ignoring this said now the first thing we're gonna work on is your horrible tojutsu. Naruto turning back to her said hey don't call my tojutsu horrible. I made it myself. Yugao hearing this blinked and asked are you serious? He nodded and said yeah, I made it myself because the teachers in the academy refused to teach me any tojutsu and Kakashi Baka was to far up Sasu team's ass to help. Yugao was now both very impressed at Naruto's willpower and pissed at Kakashi as he obviously failed to notice the pure genius that is Naruto and asked what else did you make yourself Naruto. He smiling quickly explained what he had made himself and even demonstrated his first version of the jutsu his mother had used to defeat Dodo. Yugao went from being impressed to downright flabbergasted as Naruto had just proved himself to be a once-in-a-lifetime genius and diamond in the rough. She then became grateful for Naruto for giving her and that Kakashi was so focused on the Achiha as she now had the privilege to help shape and mold what could easily become the next Hokage. She shaking her head looked at the eager Naruto and said alright Naruto-kun I'm gonna give you the rest of the day off as I need to prepare some things and maybe get you some tools. Meet me back here tomorrow morning. Naruto nodded and watched as Yugao vanished in a swirl of leaves. Naruto looking up at the sky, realized it was almost lunch time and decided to go find Kurinai for their date. Naruto having tracked down Kurinai was nervous as he stood in front of her door. Shaking his head he knocked on the door. Kurinai hearing someone knocking on her door, hoped that it wasn't her ex Asuma trying to ask her out again. She didn't want to be with him as he had chosen his cancer sticks over her. She opening the door gained a pleasant smile, spotting a nervous Naruto standing at her door. She said I'm glad you found out where I live Naruto-kun now we go out on our date. She stopped herself from giggling when Naruto's face burned a bright red hearing her actually call their evening a date. Kurinai smiling asked shall we? He nodding accepted the arm she held out for him and decided to take her to a dinning establishment and hoped that they would serve him. Entering he was about to say something when the owner, a woman with a golden Egyptian headdress on spotted him and said oh my ra. Naruto-sama. Naruto blinked and looked at the woman who said I am a worshipper of your mother Naruto-sama. Your meal is on the house and you are always welcome here. Naruto beamed hearing this and followed the blushing waitress to a table that actually was very secluded and had a bottle of wine on ice. He remembering what Aruka had told him about dates, held Kurinai's chair out for her. Kurinai sitting in the chair smiled as Naruto had held her chair out for her, like such a gentleman. He then sitting down himself blinked when the waitress from before came over with menus and asked will you be drinking the wine tonight Naruto-sama. 
Naruto shaking his head said no thank you I'd much prefer some orange juice or something like that. Kurunai said I'd like the wine. The waitress nodding set two menus down and said let me know when you're ready to order lunch. She then left to go get the juice for Naruto and a glass for Kurunai. Naruto opening the menu gained wide eyes as this place was expensive as shit. A plate of fish cost $150. Shaking his head he decided to get the shrimp and lobster plate. Kurunai looking at her own menu, remembered what the hookage told her. This date had better be damn good or she'd be chasing Tora for the next eight months. She knew it was a much lighter punishment, but she didn't want to have to catch that damn cat for so long. She then decided she would get the steak and lobster plate. Sitting her menu down she decided to make some small talk and ask so what made you ask me out. Naruto blushing said a couple of reasons. Kurunai curious asked what are they. Naruto blushing darker said well first because you seemed like a nice person. Second you're extremely pretty. Third AM Chan pointed out to me that I'm apparently a good catch and that instead of going after girls my age, I should shoot for older women. Kurunai quirking an eyebrow asked so you ask me out to lunch because I'm an older woman. Naruto quickly shaking his head said no I ask you out because you seem nice and are extremely pretty. I don't care about age as in the grand scheme of things age is irrelevant. Kurunai blinked hearing him say this and a smile worked its way on her face as she said, so the fact that I'm your senior by at least 12 years is irrelevant to you. Naruto nodding said as ninja we take dangerous missions every day that could cost us our lives and if love can be established while amongst the living, the age of the two components is irrelevant as love is timeless and crazy and stupid and blind. He then scratching his chin said well that's what Jiji told me when I was little. Kurunai giggled hearing this as that was true among all ninja. Their lunches then arrived and the two started to eat while still making small talk. Two hours later Naruto having walked Kurunai back to her place after their date was walking along thinking about what he could do as he had some time to kill. He was thinking maybe he should go find Shikamaru or someone and hang out like the old times. His plans were suddenly stopped as Konohamaru appeared and said yo boss teach me a jutsu. Naruto looking at his self-proclaimed rival for the Hokage hat, pondered if he should or not. He then decided he should as he nodded and said alright Konohamaru follow me to a training ground and I shall teach you a new jutsu. Konohamaru nodding eagerly followed Naruto to training ground 8. Naruto once in the training ground was wondering what he should teach Konohamaru when he got the idea to show Konohamaru the other jutsu floating around in his head. Creating a single shadow clone he had it walk to the middle of the field. Naruto then thinking back to the hand signs he saw Sasuke do for his fireball jutsu, stopped on the tiger hand sign. Nodding he started to slowly move through hand signs as Konohamaru watched with eager eyes. When he got the tiger Naruto pulled his hand back and said fire style. Dragon of the mortal flame jutsu. He then thrust his hand forward hoping that it would work. His hope was answered as from his hand a huge dragon made entirely of flames shot towards the wide-eyed clone. Said clone not wanting to die blurred through hand signs and said water style. Dragon of the Crashing Tides Jutsu. The clone then fired off a huge dragon made entirely of water that collided with Naruto's dragon and created a huge cloud of steam. Naruto smiling as his clone had just created another jutsu said there you go Kono, two for the price of one. Konohamaru had stars for eyes and asked which one will you teach me boss. Naruto spotting Aruka behind Konohamaru with a dark aura said neither as Aruka is about to drag you kicking and screaming back to his class. Konohamaru blinked hearing this answer and suddenly blanched as he slowly turned around to find a pissed off Aruka who said Konohamaru you shouldn't skip out on my class. Now the entire class will have to hear my lecture twice because of you. He then proceeded to drag the kicking and screaming Konohamaru back to his class. Naruto and the clone both snickered spotting this as it was quite funny. He then turned to his clone and asked so what am I supposed to do, as sensei dismissed me for the day, I already went on a date with Kurunai and Konohamaru is going to be busy for the next three hours. The clone taking up a thinking pose suddenly gained an evil smile that sent chills down the entire village's spine. The clone looking at Naruto asked how long has it been since you pranked someone. Naruto blinked and said, the last time I pranked someone was when I super glued Aruka to his chair two days before the wave mission. He then started to rub his hands as he now had something to occupy the rest of his time until tomorrow, and he even had his first target. He and his clone then started to laugh evilly. The next day Yugao having already heard about Naruto's prank spree and having been chewed out by the Hokage for not giving Naruto anything to do knew better now. She spotting Naruto walk into the training ground with a fake innocent look on his face, said okay I figured things out. The first thing we're going to do is hone your tojutsu and get as many flaws out of it as possible. Next we're gonna work on your chakra control and several chakra control exercises. Following this we're gonna find out your chakra affinities so that we start building up your jutsu list. Of course with you being the genius you are you'll most likely be making your own jutsu. Finally we'll be working on your sword skills as you're a natural born kinjutsu user, like me. 
Naruto nodded each time she spoke, still having the fake innocent look on his face. Yugao then asked now that you understand what's with the fake innocent look. Naruto then gained a devilish smile as he said, I may or may not have set up a prank for a certain emo avenger and a certain purple-haired dangle-loving woman, along with a certain one-eyed smut reading Jonin. Yugao blinked hearing this and knowing who all three were asked do I wanna know. Naruto shaking his head said, it's best you don't know sensei. In fact we should start that training schedule you set up so I can have an alibi for when the pranks activate. Yugao sweat dropped and said right. The two then got started on their training, with Yugao participating in said training. Two hours later and the two had just moved to chakra control exercises when a huge explosion shook the village and a loud scream of Maicha. Could be heard throughout the village. Naruto with several leaves covering his body had a smile on his face as the prank he had set up for Kakashi had just been activated, which would set off the others. Yugao now wearing her sports bra and also covered in leaves sweat dropped as whatever had just happened sounded serious. She taking a look at Naruto smiled as he seemed to be getting the hang of the leaf exercise. Just as she was about to say something another explosion rocked the village and a loud screech of Sasuke-kun. Could be heard through the village. Naruto chuckled as the emo avenger was now waist deep in fangirls and was almost completely naked. Plus the seals slapped on the boy kept him from moving. Yugao felt the sweat drop grow, just knowing that this had something to do with Naruto. Shaking her head she said alright Naruto-kun let's move on to the water walking exercise. Naruto nodded just as another explosion rocked the village, and Anko could be heard screaming ah, my clothes are on fire. Yugao almost face faulted hearing this while Naruto started to whistle an innocent tune. Yugao shaking her head said Hokage-sama is gonna chew me out for this, I just know it. One week later and Team 7 was finally meeting again. During this week Naruto had been training hard with Yugao and quickly went up in skill. He had also created over 20 jutsu for each of his elements. Yugao had nearly fainted when she had found out Naruto had an affinity to every element. She did faint when Naruto revealed to her that he had the Mokuten, the Heimten and the Enten. Once she had recovered she had dragged him to the Hokage's office and made him show the old man. It had been hilarious to watch the old man nearly have an heart attack when Naruto demonstrated his Mokuten by creating a solid wood pipe for him to smoke out of. After that Naruto had gained another sensei in one Yamato and man was he creepy. He had some kick-ass jutsu and helped Naruto create some new Mokuten jutsu, but the man was a creep. He had also gone out with Kurinai several more times, and the two of them were officially a couple. Naruto still couldn't fathom how he had managed that. He also found it hilarious that Aruka had called him the man for landing Kurinai. What Naruto had really liked was that Kurinai and Yugao had worked together to get him some more durable clothes, as he didn't feel like walking around in his chakra armor all day. They were the same color and even the same style as before, but now had fur lining the inside that kept him nice and cozy. Yugao had informed him it was help him stay calm in bad situations. Naruto was pretty sure it was because he had created like 12 kinjutsu for his sensei. His hands now had some anbu style armor on them, as gloves or bandages would just be ripped or stained by the end of any fight. It went well with his chakra armor sleeves, as he liked that look, and Kurinai had mentioned it have him this knight-like quality. Sitting on his hip was his sword that he had named Aljuin, or the World Eater. He had named his sword this mainly because he wanted it to be able to instill fear in his enemies and be the last thing said enemies saw before their world was consumed by blood and darkness. He had honed and refined his Kenjutsu and Tejutsu. His Tejutsu style had been named and it was called Chaos Fist. Yugao had said it fit. His Kenjutsu style on the other hand had been named Thuam. Kurinai had found the term while looking up names for his sword in the library. It meant shout in the language of the dragon again it had fit. Another thing that Naruto liked was that he could now play his guitar smoothly, and Kurinai had informed him that he could use it to place enemies in Jinjutsu. His chakra control had also improved, not so much that he could the regular clone Jutsu, but he could do some rank Jutsu. He had also gotten his first real kiss from Kurinai. It had been after their third date, and Asuma had shown up and insulted her multiple times. Naruto had in turn defended her and pranked the hell out of Asuma. Last time he checked the man was still trying to get the green out of his teeth. Kurinai had grabbed him when he walked her home and pulled him into a soul-searing kiss that had him seeing southern constellations. She venom pierced the veil song, really good song by the way. Short though. Anyways he walked into training ground 7 and snickered spotting Sasuke with a very angry look on his brooding face as his innocence had been forcefully taken by his van girls. Naruto cutting his eyes to Sakura blinked as the girl seemed not be paying attention to the resident emo avenger. Kakashi of course wasn't there yet, so Naruto had at least an hour to kill. Closing his eyes he started to meditate and was focusing his chakra to the tattoo on his forehead, trying to see if he could get it do anything. He failed to notice Sasuke noticing him. The ever-arrogant emo spotting the person responsible for him being raked by his rabid fangirls, glared and said dope. 
Naruto easily ignored Sasuke as he was focused on trying to get his tattoo to do something. Sasuke growling said once more dope. Again he was ignored as Naruto was absorbed in whatever he was trying to do. Sasuke now pissed said dope. Naruto finally registering the fact that the arrogant emo avenger was trying to get his attention. Cracking open an eye he asked what is it that you want team? Sasuke glaring at him said I know it was you who pulled that prank on me and I will get you back. Naruto giving him a plain look said team I was training with my sensei when the prank happened. I was nowhere near you when it happened so I find your theory flawed. Sasuke growling said it doesn't matter if you find my theory flawed dope, I know you pulled that prank and I was training with Kakashi sensei all week. Naruto rolling his eyes said Kakashi no echi is only my team sensei. My true sensei has been training with me since we got back from spring. Sasuke and Sakura hearing this both blinked and before the now very jealous Sasuke could say anything two poofs of smoke happened making all three genin turn to them. When the smoke cleared Naruto smiled spotting Yugao glaring at Kakashi who was once again reading his smut. Kakashi ignoring Yugao's glare coughed and said alright my cute little genin. Today we're doing something very special. We will be sparring with another team. Sasuke blinking asked which team and why. Kakashi turning a page in his book said so I can see just how strong you three are and teammate. Naruto blinked hearing this as Kurenai was the sensei to teammate, plus Hanada his creepy stalker was on that team. Sakura with her eyes on Yugao asked who is that and why is she here. Kakashi was about to answer when Yugao said, my name is Yugao Yuzuki and I'm here to make sure Kakashi no Baka doesn't try to copy any of my students jutsu or anyone's jutsu for that matter. Sakura blinking asked who is your student Yuzuki-san. Yugao smiling with obvious pride pointed directly at Naruto and said my once in a lifetime genius student is one Naruto Yuzumaki. Naruto blushing at Yugao's praise said sensei. Yugao giggled shocking Kakashi and said stop being so modest Naruto-kun and it's so easy to make you blush. Naruto huffing asked when will this spar session happen. Kakashi I smiled as teammate walked in the training ground with Kurenai and said now. Half an hour later Naruto was in no way shocked or surprised to find himself standing across from Sasuke who for some reason had the most arrogant smirk on his face. Kakashi still reading his smut said alright this the last spar of the day and it's Naruto vs Sasuke. I or Yugao will call the match to an end and you will obey our commands. He then flipping a page asked understand. Naruto nodding said sure Kakashi no echi. Kakashi ignored Kurenai and Yugao giggling at this and asked do you understand Sasuke. Sasuke nodding said I understand perfectly sensei. Kakashi nodding started the match. Sasuke dropping into his fighting stance and activating his Sharingan said alright dope get ready for me to repay you for the stupid prank. Naruto dropping into the chaos fist rolled his eyes and said I already told you that I couldn't have pulled the prank as I was busy training with Yugao sensei. Sasuke snorting said I don't believe you dope then I'll beat the truth out of you anyway. He then dashed forward at a pretty good speed. Too bad for him Naruto had been training with Yugao and was easily able to keep up. So blocking Sasuke's punch, he responded with a gut-wrenching kick that sent Sasuke flying back. Sasuke holding his stomach glared at Naruto and asked how did you do that dope. Naruto eye smiling said trade secret team. Sasuke growling charged towards Naruto and before long to Sakura's, Kakashi's, Kiba's, Shino's and Hinata's shock Naruto was easily defeating Sasuke and wasn't even struggling to do so. Sasuke now pissed said enough playing games dope. Stop this. He then blurred through hand signs and to Kakashi's shock shot a fire dragon at Naruto. Naruto noticing this, put his hands in the tiger hand sign and thrust his hand forward. Yugao beamed when Naruto fired his new and improved dragon of the mortal flame jutsu. Now the dragon wasn't the color of regular flames, but was completely red increasing its power. Naruto's dragon swallowed Sasuke's jutsu up like a midnight snack and was heading directly for the wide-eyed Sasuke until it veered off and shot into the sky. Naruto ending his jutsu glared at Sasuke and asked what the hell team. Sasuke growling was about to go through more hand signs when his hand was suddenly wrapped in chains and he was forced to his knees. Naruto appearing with a kunai pressed to his throat, said yield team. Sasuke snarling grudgingly surrendered making Naruto the victor of the battle. Kakashi shocked that Sasuke had used such a jutsu on his teammate, glared at the boy. Yugao on the other hand was literally glowing with pride as her student had easily defeated the rookie of the year. Kurenai with a smile of her own was proud of her boyfriend at not only holding his own, but easily defeating the Acha. Kiba with wide eyes asked Wo Naruto that was all kinds of awesome. Shino nodding said, that was most impressive Yuzumaki-san. Anada poking her fingers together said Naruto-kun. Sakura was beyond shocked at what she had just witnessed. Naruto walking over to his spot picked up the tag no one had seen him placed, and Sasuke felt the chains vanish. Naruto putting the tag back in his pocket smiled and said thanks. Kakashi still glaring at Sasuke, said alright then. Now that you've all sparred and Yuga can give her evaluation to the Hokage, I guess I can give Team 7 the permission slips for the Chunin exams. 
He then did so and Naruto looking at it didn't even hesitate to fill it out. Kurinai did the same for her students, and Yugao still smiling with pride said, all of you are dismissed, and if you're taking the exams show up at the academy and get to room 301 at 10 o'clock. All three Jonin then vanished, but not before Kurinai informed Hinata that the two of them needed to talk later. Naruto once the Jonin were gone, decided to go find Konohamaru, Mogi and Yudin, and teach them some jutsu. He then walked off ignoring Sasuke sending a heated glare at him and Kiba, calling out to him telling him to wait up. A few minutes later Naruto could be seen walking beside Kiba as the two of them searched for the Konohamaru core. The two were talking about old times and Naruto's training. Naruto was kinda shocked to hear that Kurinai had been telling everyone she could about Team 7's encounter with Zabuza and him becoming the hero of Wave. Apparently Yugao had also been telling people about Team 7's mission to Spring, formerly known as Snow, and how he was the on who saved Princess Koyuki, otherwise known as Princess Gale. He had no idea why the two were doing this, but he didn't mind just as long as no one tried to lie about anything. Both boys blinked when a familiar voice begged he didn't mean to bump into you. You see I was chasing him and he wasn't looking where he was going. The voice neither recognized said I don't care this little twerp ran into me and called me a clown. No one calls me a clown. Naruto sweat dropped when Konohamaru's boy said hey don't blame me if you wear makeup, have that ridiculous cat suit on, and look like a clown. The voice growled and said brat this is war paint and I'm about to beat some respect into you. Naruto sighing literally vanished, making Kiba's jaw drop. He appeared with his sword held against a boy holding Konohamaru's throat and said drop Konohamaru and I don't find out if you can imitate a headless chicken. Thank Kuro shitting himself as this new kid had literally come out of nowhere dropped Konohamaru who had stars for eyes as he said whoa cool boss. Naruto ignored Konohamaru's reaction and vanished again. Appearing in front of Konohamaru with his sword back on his hip, he got a good look at Kankuro. Instantly Naruto agreed with Konohamaru as the boy did look like a clown. His eyes then caught a hint of blonde. Moving his eyes from Kankuro, a blush instantly stained Naruto's face as standing behind Kankuro to the right was a gorgeous blonde bombshell, with her hair up and four pigtails. Tamari checking Naruto out herself could tell that this boy was fast and obviously skilled as he had gotten behind Kankuro without either noticing. Naruto shaking his blush away set his back on Kankuro as he started to take whatever was on his back off. Tamari also noticing this asked you're not about to do what I think you're going to do are you? Kankuro now pissed said this blonde should ask for it. Naruto rolling his eyes said actually clown-san, I just saved your life as harming the grandson of the third Hokage, would most likely have ended with you being dead and Kanoha declaring war on Suna. Personally I would have lead the charge as he may be a brat and nuisance at times, but he's my little brother, and anyone who harms him will have to go through me first. Hanohimaru hearing this beamed while Kankuro once again shit his pants and asked that little twerp is the grandson of the third. Naruto nodding said yes now your friend in the tree seems to be mighty upset with you. Kankuro and Tamari both blinked but blanched when a cold monotone voice said Kankuro you're an embarrassment to the village. A swirl of sand then happened and Gara appeared. Kankuro shaking said but Gara. Gara not hearing it said shut up or I'll kill you. Kankuro shut his mouth. Gara then setting his eyes on Naruto asked who are you? Naruto looking the boy directly in his seafoam green eyes said I believe it's common courtesy to introduce yourself before asking for someone's else name. Gara said my name is Gara Sabaku. Naruto nodding said Naruto Yuzumaki. Gara nodding asked are you participating in the Chunin exams? Naruto said I plan on it. Gara smirking said well then I will see you during the exams Yuzumaki. He then turning to the still pale Kankuro and Tamari and said we're leaving as Baki has procured a room for us. Both terrified people nodded. Naruto's blush came back to his face when Tamari turned around and he got a look at her backside. He said wait. All three soon a ninja turned and Naruto asked I didn't get your name. Gara blinking didn't understand and Kankuro thinking that Naruto was talking to him smirked and said Kankuro Sabaku and I. He was cut off by Naruto who said, not you clown boy I meant the cute blonde. Tamari blushed darkly hearing him call her cute and said Tamari Sabaku. Naruto hearing this felt his blush darken as he asked Desert Flower. Tamari nodded and Naruto without thinking said damn whoever named you must have know you'd grow up to be so pretty. Tamari hearing him once again compliment her blushed harder and walked away with her siblings, a confused Gara looking between her and Naruto and a pissed Kankuro mumbling about being called a clown again. Naruto once the group was gone turned to Konohamaru, Mogi and Yudin and said alright you three, come on. I haven't taught you a jutsu in a while, and I intend to fix that. All three kids gained stars in their eyes and cheered. Naruto setting his eyes on Ino who was looking at his entire said, thank you for sticking up for Konohamaru Ino, if you ever need anything just ask, and I'll see what I can do, as I'm sure the old man and even Asuma will say the same. He then turned and walked away with three eager kids trailing closely. Ino staring at him as he slowly vanished tasked was that Naruto.
Gurren I having already listened to Yugao's report on both teams, was now sitting across from Hinata, wondering how to approach the subject she wanted to talk about. A part of her just wanted to be blunt and tell Hinata that she was now dating Naruto and that the Hyuga heiress needed to stop stalking him as it was fucking creepy. Another part of her knew she needed to break the news gently and maybe get Hinata to start liking Shino, who obviously had feelings for the Hyuga heiress. The third and final part of her was not actually thinking about the talk she was about to have with Hinata. It was focused on the talk she had with 1am Ichiraku the other day. Here comes a flashback. Guru and I had been walking down the street after another pleasant and successful date with Naruto and had blinked finding herself face to face with Aya Michiraku. Kuro and I knew who she was because Naruto had told her about the Raymond waitress. She had no clue why Aya was giving her such a stern look, but it made Kuro and I feel nervous. Aya looking at Kuro and I with her arms folded under her sizable bosom said we need to talk Kuro and I san. Kuro and I blinking asked about what? Aya giving her a plain look said about your new boyfriend. Kurenai hearing this nodded and lead AM to a nearby cafe, where she was actually heading in the first place. Both females sat down and ordered something. Kurenai once their order had arrived, asked what about Naruto-kun. AM sipping her black tea, said I'm sure you know about how hard he's had it and how much utter bullshit this village put him through, just because had something done to him against his will. Kurenai nodded as she did indeed know about this. AM spotting this took another sip said I'm also sure you know just how much this village owes him. Gurunai nodded again as Kanoha owed Naruto too much in her mind, and anything they did to repay him was barely scratching the surface in what they should be doing. AM spotting this nod also said I'm not sure you're aware that Naruto-kun is literally the closest anyone in this village will ever get to meeting another god. Gurunai hearing this blinked and said I was not aware of this. AM nodded and said I'm sure you weren't. The ninja of this village tend to not pay attention to what the civilians do. It's not their fault either as because of the idiotic actions of the civilian council, the ninja rarely associate with the civilians. Gurunai nodded as this was true, because the civilian council were such avid believers that Naruto was a demon or should have been killed a long time ago, they had alienated the ninja who believed Naruto should have been praised and worshipped for containing the Kaiubi. Am said what most of the village hasn't realized is that about 20-something years ago a goddess walked amongst us. Gurunai's eyes widened hearing this, and she asked really. Am smiled and said yes. The goddess is currently still being worshipped by most of the civilian populace. Her goddess name is Ra, Egyptian goddess of the sun. She also has dominion over flames and fire of all kinds, water and ice of all kinds, thunder and lightning and nature. Guru and I hearing this whistled and said I guess that means I should pray to her the next time I'm out in the wilderness. Am nodded and said yes. As I was explaining she walked amongst us for over 13 years, living with us, eating with us and even fighting with you ninja. Until 12 years ago on the day of her child's birth, a great tragedy occurred and masked man unleashed a demon on the village. Am didn't have to see Kurenai's eyes to widen to know that the Jonin had figured out that the child was Naruto and the great tragedy was the Kaiubi attack. Kurenai now shaking asked Naruto-kun is. Am nodded and said the only child of Ra and by all rights and purposes, the most noble person on the entire face of the elemental nations. Kurenai gulped and asked who was she. Am said her human form was someone many people feared and was even the sensei to your friend and Naruto-kun's new sensei. Gurunai blinked and started to think over what she knew, and suddenly she felt sweat start pouring down her forehead as she asked Naruto-kun is the son of the legendary Uzumaki death god. Am nodded and said correct. Gurunai nearly fainted hearing Am say this. Am said now I myself am a worshipper of Kishina-sama, and I have learned that on that mission, the one where Naruto-kun turned the land of snow into the land of spring, he came into contact with Kishina-sama, and she unlocked his godly powers, bestowed upon him at birth by Kishina-sama, but had been locked away because of the Kaiubi seal. She also informed me that Naruto-kun now shares two new dominions with her, and that in every way possible Naruto-kun is basically a mortal god, who once he dies, will ascend into his rightful place beside his mother, as the god of Digimon and Pokerol's Pokemon. Now allow me to explain what Digimon and Pokerl is. She then explained what they were to Kurenai who asked what does telling me all of this have to with me dating Naruto-kun. Am sitting her tea down, gave Kurenai a serious look and said all of this is to inform you that you cannot be selfish and keep Naruto-kun all to yourself. He not only deserves all of the love he can take, but it's his literal divine destiny and right to have as many women loving and caring for him as possible or he wants. Kurenai hearing this asked you want me to accept that he needs to have a harem? Am nodding said yes so don't be selfish and try to stop other women who want to and truly love him from doing so. Am then standing up said I will give you the time to think this over, also if you can talk to the Hyuga on your team as Naruto doesn't like her like that and he finds her stalking him creepy as hell. Am then left the cafe with Kurenai pondering things. Flashback over now. 
Shaking her head Kurunai looked Hinata directly in the eyes and decided to be straight up with her student and push her onto Shino and said Hinata, I've asked you here today because I need to inform you that I am now dating Naruto. I did this not to hurt you nor did I intentionally ignore your crush on him. It just happened and I'm kinda in love with him. Now before you cry or anything let me inform you that Shino, your quiet and peaceful teammate, has very strong feelings for you and you should see where that could go. Also Naruto doesn't like the fact that you stalk him so please stop. Hinata hearing this gained wide eyes and thought over everything Kurunai had just told her. Hinata shaking her head sighed and said okay Kurunai sensei, but if you hurt him I'll kill you sensei and sister figure or not. She then walked out of the tea shop and Kurunai snorted as she said, I would never do something that stupid as you'd be the least of my worries. She then blinked when Yugao, Hana and Anko all sat down around her. Anko looking irritated at the fact that she was wearing actually decent looking clothes, asked why did you call us here Nai-chan. Kurunai with a devious smile on her face said I called you all here to ask you all a question. Anna blinked and asked you called us all here knowing that I still have to find a way to get Naruto to forgive me, so I don't have to chase that stupid cat until I'm 60 to ask a question. Kurunai still having that devious smile on her face nodded. Yugao said ask the question already, as I need to go find my student and warn him about Guy and his clone. Every single person in the shop shivered knowing the two people she was talking about. Kurunai asked how do you three feel about Naruto-kun. Her smirk returned when a heated blush appeared on both Hana's and Yugao's face, while Anko seemed to think about it. Anko answered first with I think he's cute and pretty bad as for a genin, but if he's the one responsible for my clothes catching on fire, I'm gonna beat him like a rug. Hana still with a blush on her face, said I think he's really brave and handsome, and he'd make an excellent alpha. Kurunai set her eyes on Yugao who turned her head and said Naruto-kun is a pure genius that comes around once in a lifetime. He's also sweet, cute and very caring. He's also a natural-born Kinjutsu user and has the most lovely eyes I've ever seen on anyone. Kurunai chuckled hearing this and asked what would you say if I told you that he's destined to do great things. All three females said we'd tell you no shit. Kurunai rolled her eyes and asked what if I told you that he's gonna need strong females by his side. Yugao quirked an eyebrow and said Kurunai you're already dating him, I don't see why you're telling us he needs a strong female by his side. She had failed to realize that Kurunai had used the plural form of female. Anko and Hana hadn't and Anko with narrowed eyes asked Nai-chan what are you trying to ask us. Kurunai I smiled and said I'm formally informing you three that I want you three in Naruto-kun's harem with me. Of course I'd be the alpha, with you three being directly under me in power, but you'd still get to be with Naruto-kun. She chuckled as Hana sputtered, Anko gaped and Yugao nearly fainted. She now understood why Naruto liked pranks. They were so funny. Across the village Naruto watched as Konohamaru, Mogi and Yudin tried to perfect the dragon of the mortal flame jutsu. He had tried to teach them another jutsu, but the stubborn kids had refused to learn it as they wanted to learn the dragon of the mortal flame jutsu. So Naruto had agreed, but not before slapping some fireproof seals on their arms and bodies. He had also placed the focusing seals on their hands so they could draw in the power and heat of the sun. The one closest to pulling the jutsu off was Mogi, as apparently her good chakra control allowed her better control over jutsu. He blinked when Mogi actually managed to create a decent-sized dragon and fired it at the practice dummies he had set up for the three. She cheered when the dummy was revealed to have third-degree burns. Clapping he smiled at Mogi and said good job Mogi-chan. You've got the first part down, now you have to increase its size, regulate its temperature and finally learn how to control it. Mogi hearing this pouted and asked is all of that really necessary Nai-chan? Naruto nodding said, of course Mogi-chan. After all when used to its full power this jutsu ranks up there in the S-class jutsu. All three pair of eyes widened and the four eyes of the seasoned Kinoichi watching from the trees even widened. Konohamaru asked what do you mean boss? Naruto smiling said the dragon of the mortal flame jutsu is only the first level of the jutsu. The second and more deadly level of the jutsu literally opens up a portal to another realm and summons an actual dragon to assist you in battle. It's also more chakra consuming which is why I have you three learning and perfecting the first level. Mogi giving him the puppy dog eyes asked will you please show us the second level Nai-chan. Naruto smiling said sure as it gives me a chance to work on a new jutsu that's been floating around in my head. He created a clone that walked into the middle of the training ground. Naruto then took off his jacket and armor to reveal his bare upper body, making the four seasoned Kinoichi blush and drool. Konohamaru confused asked what are you doing boss? Naruto eye smiling at him said you'll see in a few minutes. He then removed his gloves and dropped into a stance. Closing his eyes he flared his chakra and put the fact that Kurunai, Yugao, Anko and Hana was there watching in his mind for later and started focusing the chakra to his right arm. He opening his eyes and ignoring the roar of a dragon in his ears, said bear witness to the most powerful dragon jutsu in all of existence. He then surged his hand forward and said fire style. 
Dragon of the Darkness Flame Jutsu. Eyes widened when from his arm a huge pitch black flaming dragon with hungry red eyes shot towards the pale clone. The clone quickly blurring through hand signs said Heimton. Wolf of the Frigid Arctic Jutsu. The clone then unleashed a huge wolf made of ice and snow that had powerful yellow eyes. When the two attacks clashed, the ground literally shook and a tempest kicked up almost blowing, Kinohamaru, Mogi and Yudin away. When the smoke cleared and the tempest settled down, everyone had wide eyes as where the two jutsu had met a deep hole literally cracking with electricity could be seen. Naruto eye smiling at the three kids said that was the second level, and as you can see it's very powerful. All three kids gained stars in their eyes, and Kanohimaru said Yash, we must work on perfecting the first level, so that boss can teach us the second level. Yuta nodding said Naisama will help us achieve greatness. Mogi standing with her two friends said we will learn from Naisama and we will be genin in no time. All three kids cheered and got back to their practice. Naruto still with an eye smile said man you've gotta love kids. Yugao with her jaw hanging open said Kakashi no Baka is an absolute idiot. Anko in a similar state said I've gotta get him to teach me that jutsu. Han like her two friends said with jutsu like that he should already be a chunin. Gurunai gaping said I had no idea my boyfriend was so powerful. The next day, Naruto could be seen walking towards the academy, fully prepared for anything that may come. He even had the Kubakirabacho sealed on him just in case someone was actually strong or fast enough to knock Aljuin away from him. He walking forward suddenly stilled as he felt a Jinjutsu wash over him. Looking around he noticed that nothing was really happening. This confused him as he was told that Jinjutsu were meant to harm. He blinked again when Kurenai and Yugao appeared in front of him. Kurenai smiling walked up and said, don't worry Naruto-kun we're really here. He sighed in relief hearing this thinking that some enemy had captured him and some lay mass Jinjutsu. Yugao giggled hearing him sigh and said Nai-chan tell him what you discussed with the others. Naruto quirked an eyebrow wondering what Kurenai needed to tell him. Kurenai sighed wondering how Naruto was going to take what she had to tell him. She then leaning forward whispered what she needed to tell him in his ear. Naruto hearing what she said turned so red that he was making Kashina's hair look white. Naruto's mind was going a million miles an hour as the fact that Kurenai, his girlfriend was forcing him to have a harem and had invited her three sexy as hell friends into his apparent harem. Shaking his head he looked at his sensei and wondered how she felt. Yugao gaining a smirk that would make the ones he did when he had a prank planned look tame. She sauntering up to him with a coy smile on her lips, leaned forward giving him a perfect view of her breast, since she wasn't wearing a bra and was wearing one of her more loose shirts. She smiled when Naruto's eyes didn't even stray to her sweater puppies but locked on her eyes. She leaned forward and said I'm just getting out of a relationship Naruto-kun with someone I gave my heart to. But you make me feel like there's butterflies in my stomach. So I've decided to join your harem, even though I'm your sensei. She then giving Naruto a light chaste kiss on the lips and said, let this be your inspiration to make it past the second exam. She then smirked and said who knows what you'll get if you make it past that exam. She then leaning up turned and walked away with swaying hips and then vanished in a swirl of leaves. Naruto stood staring there for a few seconds in a state of pure shock as his sensei had just kissed him on the damn lips and was part of his harem. Shaking his head he turned to Kurenai who had a victorious smirk on her face. She grabbing him and pulling him into a deep kiss that had him once again seeing southern constellations, dropped him and said, that's another inspiration for you to make it past the second exam Naruto-kun. When and if you do make it past that part then. She smiled and whispered I'll be taking your virginity and riding you like a bucking bronco. Naruto's face could have replaced the tomato from how red it was while some blood dripped from his nose. She giggled at his reaction and like Yugao before turned from him with swaying hips before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. The Jinjutsu then vanished and Naruto swore up and down, he could hear the Kaiubi inside of him grumbling about lucky brats landing stone cold foxes. Shaking his head he knew that his mom was smacking karma round up in the realm of the gods as no way was this normal. He then started his journey back up to the academy to start the Chunin exams. An hour later Naruto was pinching the bridge of his nose as Sasuke, ever the arrogant emo avenger, had alerted the entire room below that there had been a Jinjutsu over the door. Naruto had resisted the urge to slap the duck-ass boy on the back of his head and settled for sending the Ichiha Wilton glare. The boy hadn't apparently gotten the message as he was now fighting with Rock Lee, a green-wearing nutcase with eyebrows so thick they looked alive. The boy was most likely a Tajutsu specialist like Guy, but no the Ichiha and all of his supposed infinite wisdom had accepted the fight. The only good thing was now the arrogant one was now getting his ass handed to him in the most spectacular and entertaining way. It all ended when Guy appeared to admonish Lee for trying to do a jutsu that wasn't mean for use against comrades. Naruto shut his eyes tightly when the twin nutcases of Konoha hug, having been warned about what looking at this could do to his mind by Yugao. Sadly Sakura and the emo were hit full force by whatever it was and Naruto refused to open his eyes until he was sure it had stopped. 
He then pushed the two traumatized idiots through the door. The once sure it was safe opened his eyes and blinked finding Kakashi and a smirking Yuga leaning against the door. Rolling his eyes at Kakashi still reading his smutty asked, what are you two doing here? Kakashi I smiled and said I'm here to make sure my cute little genin all came to take this exam. Naruto blinked hearing this and easily figured out what Kakashi was trying to say, he turning to Yugao blinked when she still with a smirk on her face, said I'm here to tell you to go all out. She then licked her lips and said I'm also gonna remind you of what I told you on your way to the exams. Naruto's face burned bright red, remembering what she had said. He walking towards the door said I won't hold back sensei and Kakashi no echi, stop calling us cute, it kinda sounds like you're a pedophile. He then walked into the room ignoring how Kakashi had turned so green he was making grass jealous. Yugao snickered hearing Naruto call Kakashi a pedophile. She then watched as Sasuke and Sakura walked into the room. Shaking her head she eye smiled at Kakashi and said come on Kakashi no pedo, we should get to the Jonin lounge, or are you still busy thinking about the Achiha and yourself in a bedroom? She giggled when Kakashi turned even greener as he said, not funny Yugao. Both Jonin then vanished in a swirl of leaves. Naruto walking into the correct room rolled his eyes as he was hit with the killing intent of the room. Lifting up his hands he gave the entire room the bird and said fuck you. The killing intent increased and it didn't bother him one bit as he was used to Yugao sending killing intent at him, plus they had nothing on the late Zabuza. He was about to say something when he was glumped by a purple missile. Blinking several times he turned to find himself being nuzzled by Ino who said, you know just how to make an entrance Naruto-kun. Naruto really confused turned to Shikamaru and asked what the hell. Shikamaru sighing said, the troublesome woman decided that Sasuke team otherwise known as Lord Emo of Lake Brood or High King Duck Ass of the Knights of Emo was no longer worth her time after his last rather harsh rejection of her affections. You are now the target of her love and time. Naruto hearing this sweat dropped and turned to Sasuke. He said thanks oh great and powerful Lord Emo for dumping one of your most tenacious fangirls on my shoulders. Please if there's every anything I can not do for you, don't let me know. Sasuke sneered at Naruto and turned to find teammate walking towards them. Naruto instantly noticed that Hinata was holding hands with Shino and smiled. He was about to say something when Sakura said Ino pig get off of Naruto-kun. He and everyone else from Konoha who knew Sakura blinked and gained wide eyes. Ino glaring at Sakura asked why would I do that forehead. Sakura having finally decided grabbed Naruto's arm and said because he's mine. Naruto hearing this blanched as the sentence meant that he now had both of Sasuke's most tenacious fangirls on his tail. Groaning he turned to Sasuke and said seriously thank you High King Emo of the unholy knights of Castle Brood. Sasuke now upset as his two tenacious fangirls had abandoned him for the dope. Eno glaring at Sakura said as if forehead. Naruto-kun is mine. Sakura sending a powerful glare back at Eno said no, he's mine. Both girls then started to argue loudly to Naruto's dismay. This would continue for the next 20 minutes when a boy that had warning bells sounding in Naruto's head walked over and said you rookies should quite down. Diba snorting asked who the hell are you? The boy pushing up his glasses said pardon my name is Kabuto Yakushi and I'm a Kanoha genin like you guys, but I've taken the Chunin exams before. When he said this Naruto's eyes narrowed and he asked how many times have you failed Yakushi-san. Kabuto said seven times. The warning bells were now blaring and Naruto instantly decided that this Kabuto was not to be trusted. He blinked when Sasuke said I'd like information on Rock Lee and Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto letting his brain catch up said give me information on Tamari Sabaku. He ignored when across the room said female blushed. Kabuto nodding revealed three cards. Naruto quickly snatched the one with his information on it and the one with Tamari's info. His eyes narrowed even more spotting the info on his card as all of this was confidential info that only the Hokage was supposed to know, hell some of it was info he hadn't even told Jiji yet. Igniting the fire inside he burned the card and sent a potent glare at Kabuto. He then started to read Tamari's card. He couldn't stop the impressed whistle that came out of his mouth as he read it. He smiled and said, not only is she pretty, but she's a wind user, and she's a mistress of the wind. His smile widened and said she's gonna be fun. The Mari across the room had a burning blush on her face as the cute and powerful boy she was quickly gaining a crush on Naruto and wondered if she could talk to him before the finals. Naruto ignored when the three sound genin attacked Kabuto and the silver-haired spy fell to his knees. He also chose to ignore Sakura and Ino still arguing over him. Half an hour later Naruto was sitting in a chair between Hinata and some random aim ninja. Naruto had took one look at the written exam and knew that there was no fucking way anyone not as smart as Sakura or Shikamaru would be able to answer these questions without cheating. He didn't have to cheat as his mom literally took over for about 5 minutes and filled out all of the other answers, she also informed him that this exam was easy compared to what was coming next. Naruto didn't like the way that it sounded but ignored it in favor of having a pleasant conversation with his mom. Turns out he also gained his godly love of Raymond from her. 
He blinked when his mom informed him that he was most likely going to activate a devolution soon. She wasn't sure why or when, but knew it was coming soon. He had asked her what kind of creature did she think he would digevolve into. She had giggled and said he was most likely going to digevolve into a dragon, as one of her more powerful forms was a dragon. This got him asking her all about her different forms. His eyes had widened when she had informed him that she had many different forms and had actually gained two from her new dominions. These new forms were apparently legendary poke girls known as Haro and Maltits. Naruto hadn't even asked what was up with the names, but had asked if he would ever get to travel to this apparent world of poke girls. She had giggled and told him cryptically he would find out after the second exam. This had made him blink, but shrug as she was his mom, and he trusted her. She then informed him that she would talk to him later as she was looking for something to give him. This made his focus come back to the outside, and he blinked several times as a lot of the genin that had been in the room before was now gone. His mind then filled in all of the info he missed out on. Apparently the proctor, Ibiki Marino, had spilled some utter bullshit about failing them and banning them from the tune-in exams if they failed the last questions. Rolling his eyes he said oi should head stop stalling for time, as both know that you can't do a damn thing besides fail us for this year. You don't have the power or the authority to ban any of us from taking other tune-in exams. Ibiki with a twitching eyebrow asked what makes you so sure Brad. Naruto giving him the finger said one because you're just a jonin, two only the old man could do that, and he knows damn well I'd prank him and the village for the next six months if he even thought of trying that shit. Now shut the fuck up and tell us we passed already. Ibiki's eyebrows were now twitching badly, and several tick marks could be seen on his head. He glaring at Naruto said brat you've got some balls to talk to me like that, but. Here he smirked and said you're absolutely right and to all of you who remained congratulations you passed. He then started talking about things that honestly bored Naruto, so he started to think about what the second exam could be. He blinked when Anko appeared in the room with a banner declaring her sexy but no longer single. She looking around the room said 76 genin. She turning to the now dangerously twitching Ibiki said, you've lost your touch. Ibiki was about to say something when Naruto said he never had the touch. I bet he couldn't even intimidate Iruka sensei Ibiki was now leaking killing intent as Anko turned to look Naruto directly in the eyes. She then walked right up to him ignoring the looks all of the other genin was sending her. Grabbing him by his collar and continued to stare him in the eyes. Naruto was about to say something when his mind was temporarily shut down as she planted a soul-searing, toe-curling kiss on his lips that once again had Naruto seeing southern constellations. Anko dropping him licked her lips and ignored the killing intent sent her way by Sakura, Ino and Tamari. She turned and said alright kitties and Naruto-kun, follow me to training ground 44. She then left the same way she came in, making many sweat drop. Naruto and the others simply followed her, with Naruto being in a daze. Ibiki grumbling about having to give smart-mouthed kids a talk, started collecting the papers. He blinked when he got to Naruto's and found a hidden message for him. He looking it over gained wide eyes and quickly vanished to go inform the hookage of what Naruto had found out. Anko now standing in front of the forest of death, was giving her explanation while munching on Dango. Naruto no longer in a daze was getting this overwhelming sense of trepidation as he stared at the massive and dark forest in front of him. It wasn't actually the forest that made him uneasy, as he had been in there before. No, it was the long-tongued Kusa Kanoichi that made Naruto's skin crawl and the hair on the back of his neck stand on end. He didn't know why, but this person gave him the creeps and made him want to summon his dragon friend and unleash her full power on the freak and not even care about the effects doing this would cause. He blinked feeling eyes on him. Turning he found Tamari staring at him. This made him smile and say hey desert flower. I do hope you're not planning anything indecent while staring at me. Tamari's face burned red as she turned away as she had been thinking indecent things while staring at him, most of them along the lines of finding out if he was such a good kisser. Anko I smiling after every group of genin got their scrolls, with her blowing a kiss at Naruto. She giggled when he blushed brightly and the Hirono sent her a glare. Apparently Naruto was becoming a wanted product and the Hirono wanted him. She knew she needed to inform Kurinai about this and planned on doing so after she said alright kitties go and don't die, specifically you Naruto-kun. Naruto now blushing even harder jumped into the forest with Sakura and Sasuke following him. As he landed on the branch of a tree he said I got a bad feeling about this. Two hours later Naruto's bad feeling from before was now worse and this had made him very paranoid. His paranoia had pushed him to secure his team the needed scroll early and had defeated both an aim team and a Kiri team. The aim team had the heaven scroll which team 7 already had, but Naruto took it anyway just in case. The Kiri team had the scroll they needed and Naruto had taken it without any reservations. So now the three of them were moving through the forest and Naruto was constantly looking over his shoulder for whatever was giving him the bad feeling. His eyes widened as the wind suddenly picked up around him and his team. He quickly pulled out Aljuin and slashed down. 
This allowed him to literally cut the wind coming towards them. Naruto noticed that the wind had continued to hit the trees around them and had snapped many of them in half. Naruto cursed at this and dropped into a ready stance, just as the Kusa Kinoichi from before appeared. She chuckled as she said, impressive Naruto-kun, my sources had informed me you were quite impressive. Naruto narrowing his eyes asked is one of these so-called sources Kabuto Yakushi. The Kinoichi's eyes widened just enough for Naruto to know that he had guessed right and Kabuto was a fucking spy. The Kinoichi chuckled and said I have no idea what you're talking about. Naruto rolled his eyes and said sure you don't. Naruto was about to say something else when the ever-present emo asked, who are you and what do you want? The Kinoichi setting her eyes on Sasuke, licked her lips and said I want you Sasuke-kun. Naruto shivered hearing this and said okay that was wrong on 10 levels, as you're obviously a guy in some kind of advanced hench. The Kinoichi setting her eyes back on Naruto asked what makes you think so. Naruto responded with one you have entirely too much chakra to be a Kinoichi, two you haven't blasted Sakura for making you other Kinoichi look bad, and three you smell way too much like a dude to be a girl shithead. The Kinoichi chuckling said well done Naruto-kun. The Kinoichi then vanished, even to Naruto's eyes, and the next thing he knew he was crashing through several trees. Naruto landed with a solid thud, and as he leaned up he gained wide eyes spotting a huge snake standing over him with hungry eyes. Naruto moved quickly to avoid being swallowed up by the snake and said well fuck. He then pulling Aljuin out once more shut his eyes planning on dealing with this wretched snake with his kenjutsu. Back with Sasuke, Sakura and Orochimaru, Sakura was frozen in pure shock as the Kanoichi beat the brakes off of Sasuke, which she had only seen Naruto do so far. Everything Sasuke tried was beaten back or plain out ignored by the Kanoichi. This had Sakura wondering if this is what it truly meant to be a Kanoichi. Sasuke getting kicked in the stomach growled wondering why all of the training the civilian council was forcing Kakashi to give him wasn't working. He standing up glared at the Kanoichi with his finally three Tomo Sharingan. He blurring through hand signs called forth a Chidori and charged at the Kanoichi who cackled and said yes come at me with everything show me the power of the Ichiha clan. She then to Sasuke's horror caught his Chidori and then broke all of his fingers. She then kicked him clear across the battlefield. Laughing she turned to Sakura and asked what's the matter girl, can't fathom the power of a true Kanoichi. Sakura whimpered when those yellow slitted eyes landed on her. The Kanoichi was about to say something else when he felt a tremendous amount of chakra heading his way. Replacing himself with a log, he gasped when a fire dragon swallowed it up. He traced this fire dragon all the way to Naruto who said, don't listen to this shithead Sakura, he's not even a true Kanoichi. He's a fucking dude who looks like a lady. She venom whoa that dude looks like a lady. Naruto ending his jutsu glared at Orochimaru and said I figured out who you are. The Kanoichi quirked an eyebrow and asked who am I Naruto-kun. Naruto said you're Orochimaru of the Sanin, wanted S rank missing ninja of Konoha, summoner of the snake clan. Orochimaru started to cackle as he asked how did you know Naruto-kun. Naruto snorting and taking off his armor and the top part of his clothes said only two people from Konoha have the snake summons and Anko-chan wouldn't bother herself to send one after me as she knows I'd get her back. Orochimaru taking off the Kanoichi he was wearing like an old dress, chuckled and said yes, I'd heard of your legendary pranks. I have to admit if you ever used your mind for evil, you'd be the most feared person in the elemental nations. Naruto rolled his eyes and asked are we gonna sit here and talk or are we going to fight? Orochimaru chuckled and asked do you really think you stand a chance against me? Naruto shrugging said we'll never know until I try with we Petamaru. Orochimaru chuckled and said correct Naruto-kun. He then vanished and this time Naruto was ready. He ducked under Orochimaru's punch and landed a solid kick to the snake's man's stomach. Orochimaru didn't even feel it as he slapped Naruto away. The snake sand and blurred through hand signs and unleashed a wind jutsu towards Naruto. Naruto spotting this drew Aljuin and said Kenjutsu. Wrath of the World Eater Jutsu. He then slashed once and to Orochimaru's shock and the now watching Anko's awe unleashed a huge stream of flames that consumed his wind attack and created a circle of flames around them. Naruto not finished yet dashed forward and said Kenjutsu. Roar of the World Eater Jutsu. Orochimaru was then blasted backwards from a massive force of power that literally made him crash through several tress and removed almost all of his kunai and shuriken. Getting up he chuckled and said very impressive Jutsu Naruto-kun, but I am a Sanin for a reason. He then made Naruto and the others shiver when from his mouth a snake with a sword in its mouth appeared. He accepting the blade said now then let me show you the power of a Sanin. He then appeared before Naruto with tremendous speed. Naruto bringing Aljuin up to block was still knocked off of the branch he was standing on. Naruto cursing like a sailor in his mind, knew that he needed to bring out a big gun. His eyes widened when Orochimaru appeared and swung down. Naruto blocking with Aljuin again heard a mom say she loved him, but he was going to lose to Orochimaru in the first round. She then roared out that didn't mean he shouldn't give it his all. Standing up he wasn't prepared to be kicked through several trees and to crash into a rock. 
Standing to his feet with a groan, Naruto heard his mom tell him that the hit he just took had knocked a lot out of him. He could feel it as his bones ached and his muscles groaned. Standing up he decided he should release that chakra seal he had placed on himself two days ago. He releasing it, knew he felt his muscles stop groaning and his bones ached a lot less. He feeling Orochimaru kicking Sasuke's ass started blurring through hand signs. He finishing landed on Tiger with one hand and Snake with the other. He surging his chakra through his body, felt the roots of the mighty trees pick him up and carried him towards the battle. He a few feet away and watching as Anko joined in on the battle, cried out Yuzumaki Hijutsu. Combination Jutsu. SS Rank Legend of the Ghost Rider. Subcategory Spirit of Vengeance Jutsu. Half of his chakra was consumed from this jutsu as massive black roots burst from the ground and managed to ensnare Orochimaru. Then to the shock of those in the forest for the exam, Sakura, Anko and Orochimaru, the skyline opened up revealing the heavens shining. The intense light of the sun then shined down on the spot in front of Orochimaru and everyone watching gasped as what appeared to be an angel appeared for a few moments. Then this angel became consumed by bright blue flames as it transformed into a very familiar figure to Sakura. The difference this figure had from the one before was the blue skeletal wings behind it and the huge sword in its hand. This being walked towards Orochimaru and to the shock of everyone except Naruto, said Orochimaru of the three legendary Sanin. You have committed many sins if your foolish quest for immortality. You have marked your former student, forcing her to carry the blame for your sins against the cesspool of a village. My name is Zarathos and I am the angel of justice and I am here to punish you. Zarathos then grabbed Orochimaru by the throat and said look into my eyes and feel the pain of your many victims. Fell the injustices you have done to members of this village and never hurt the innocent again. He then fixed his gaze on Orochimaru who started to scream in pain just like Dodo had, but now it was even more painful. Zarathos growled when Orochimaru instead of turning to ash, turned into a bunch of blackened snakes. Naruto's jutsu then ended. Orochimaru appearing with anger in his eyes hissed Brad. Naruto then knowing this was the last jutsu of this round drew his arm back and said alright Petamaru here it comes. He then surged the last of his chakra into his arm and surged it forward. Orochimaru and Sakura was shocked when a gigantic black dragon made of flames barreled out of his arm and charged directly for Orochimaru. Sasuke was literally shacking with jealousy as this was supposed to his jutsu. Anko was in shock from the previous jutsu but had seen this jutsu before. Orochimaru was still in shock when the dragon hit him with the force of an avatar hitting a cabbage cart. She Venom Avatar the last airbender reference. Look it up. This kicked up a huge cloud of smoke. Naruto barely having any chakra and his body dropped to his knees in exhaustion. He could feel his mom beaming down from the realm of the gods at him as two S rank and above jutsu behind each other was beyond impressive for a mere genin. When the smoke cleared Sakura gasped as a huge trench could be seen from Naruto's attack. Sasuke was even more jealous from the sheer amount of power from the dobe's attacks. Anko was truly wondering if Kakashi was thinking straight when he handed over the rights to train Naruto. Orochimaru now pissed as he shed another skin, knew he needed to show Naruto just who he was dealing with. He then using his speed rushed into the clearing and instantly unleashed a hellish assault on the exhausted Naruto. Naruto not being able to do anything but take this beating, could literally feel his mom comforting him as she raged up in the realm of the gods. The feeling the nightmarish assault finally end was then tossed into the forest like a used condom. This seemed to set Anko off as she attacked Orochimaru with reckless and ferocious fury. Sasuke thinking he was better than Naruto and miraculously forgetting the ass kicking he was getting from Orochimaru joined in on the attack. Naruto laid out on the actual forest floor, was so tired and in so much pain that he felt like just closing his eyes and taking a little nap. In fact he could actually feel his eyes closing before his mother appeared in an ethereal form, now dressed much differently and having thick curly black hair that hung down to the middle of her back. She was dressed in a pure with dress that hugged her body. This dress started just below the breast and left her shoulder as exposed. She looking at him with her golden eyes filled with care and worry, said Naruto my precious pharaoh it's time for your first evolution. Naruto feeling his eyes still trying to close said I'm ready Kachan. She smiled hearing this and said good my baby boy. Tap into the overwhelming power of the digital core inside of you and let it flow into you. Naruto closing his eyes listened intently to his mother's instructions and gasped feeling this immense power inside of him that was in chakra. Ra spotting this smiled and said good you found it, now channel into the symbol in the middle of your forehead. Naruto again followed her instructions and smiled feeling this warmth wash over him. Ra smiled as Naruto's symbol, the light of devolution, but she wouldn't inform her baby of him having this until the month for the genin had training, then she'd be doing a lot and he'd be ready for the finals as a cage level genin. Her smile broadened when Naruto's body was consumed by a bright light. She decided to let the entire forest and Kanoha know what was about to happen. Activating her godly power she amplified her voice and said to give Lucian immediate. 
The entire forest turned to the source of said voice including Orochimaru who had just given Sasuke his evil hickey of doom. Rakushina watched as Naruto's form was enveloped in light and started to groan. She blinked noticing a take on a distinctively lupin form. This made her think maybe her child was going for a champion-level Digimon, Garuraman. She then watched as the form went from standing on all fours to shifting to standing on two feet. This made her gasp as maybe her child had skipped right past champion and had landed on ultimate with a weird Garuraman. She hoped not as she knew her baby couldn't handle that much power. When the light vanished she gasped as standing there was a red and black furred Lupin champion Digimon, dressed in a pair of black jeans that was torn at the knees. Hanging from this creature's belt was not only Aljuin, but also the Kubakirabacho and one more sword that made her eyes widen. This sword belonged to the digital knight Omnimon. On this wolf's hands were black metal plaited gloves, with the Kanoha symbol carried into the back. On each shoulder of this wolf's shoulder the digital biohazard symbol could be seen. Her eyes then locked with a wolf, and she found herself staring at one golden and one deep blue eye. It then threw its head back and let loose a howl that sent the animals in the forest into hiding and made the hairs on the back of everyone's neck stand. It finished with its heart-stopping howl said Lukamaman, defender of the weak and royal digital knight. Ra smiled hearing this and asked what level are you Sachi? Lukamaman smiled and said I'm a champion level mom and I feel great. She giggled and said well then I believe it's time for round two with Petamaru. Lukamaman gained a smirk that made Orochimaru suddenly shiver as if some great evil was about to be unleashed on him. He didn't know it but some great evil was about to be unleashed on him. Lukamaman dashing through the trees as a pace that would make the Hiroshin look like a stroll through the park. He arrived exactly as Orochimaru removed his fangs from the bruised and battered Sasuke's neck. Growling he blurred and slammed his hand into Orochimaru's stomach, sending the snake into the trunk of a very thick tree. Orochimaru standing up felt like his ribs were broken. Looking at what attacked him he shit his pants. Lukamaman ignoring the snake looked at what he had left on Sasuke and could instantly tell it was evil. Turning to look over Sakura he could see that the girl had a few cuts and scrapes as she apparently tried to help fend off Orochimaru. Finally setting his eyes on Anko he could see that the woman was holding her neck in pain. His eyes easily spotted what looked like an early version of the mark forming on Sasuke's neck. Turning to stare down Orochimaru he bared his teeth and said time for round two Petamaru and this time, I'm going to kick your snake ass. Orochimaru hearing the nickname Naruto had given him earlier, felt his jaw drop as he had no clue Naruto could transform like this. Sadly his shock cost him as Lukamaman once again connected with a gut-wrenching punch to the stomach. This made him drop his knees as it was like Tsunade had just punched him. Lukamaman then feeling energy in his hand surged then forward and cried out howling thunder. Orochimaru was forced to replace himself with a log as it was not only burned but was also frozen. His shock increased and he was punched square in the jaw for standing there gawking. He snapped out of his shock with this punch and snarled. He then went on the attack and soon to his shock found himself locked in a deadly battle with Lukamaman. Orochimaru jumping back summoned his sword thinking that it would give him the advantage. He was wrong as Lukamaman drew Omnimon's sword and quickly countered Orochimaru's attack. Orochimaru gasped having never seen this sword before but could literally feel the power coming from it. The two then clashed with swords for quite some time until Lukamaman managed to knock Orochimaru's sword away from him. Jumping into the air grabbed it and to the horror of Orochimaru it glowed. Landing Lukamaman revealed the Kusanagi now cleansed of the snake Sanin's influence. Lukamaman attaching it to his waist lifted his blade up and said time's up Petamaru. A chilling wind then settled down on the forest of death, and both Sakura and Anko were blessed to witness Lukamaman's sword start to gain an icy aura. Lukamaman said take this frozen apocalypse. Orochimaru nearly died of an heart attack when a titanic cloud of ice washed down over where he was standing. He quickly realized he need to get the fuck out of there before he was turned into a frozen snake. He quickly sank into the ground and retreated from Kanoha. Lukamaman feeling the snake retreat, lowered his mighty sword and turned to Anko and Sakura. Walking over to Anko he asked you alright foxy snake lady. Anko blinked as that was the name Naruto had started calling her before she joined his harem gained wide eyes and asked Naruto-kun. Lukamaman nodding could feel the devolution was about to wear off. Anko felt her eyes widened even more when Lukamaman nodded and asked what the hell. Lukamaman was about to respond when the devolution wore off with a bright flash. Anko had thankfully shut her eyes along with Sakura. When the light wore off both females opened their eyes to find Naruto standing there still without a shirt but now had four swords attached to his waist. Naruto now very tired said damn I'm wiped. He then passed out. Sakura was about to grab Naruto and take him someplace safe but blinked when Anko picked him up instead and said alright pink one I'm gonna carry this one while you carry the Ichiha. I'll carry Naruto-kun until you pick a safe hiding spot and will even lay him down. Sakura hearing this nodded, ignoring her inner growling about big chested horrors carrying her one true love. She found the hollowed out stump of a tree and quickly laid Sasuke down. 
Anko somewhat approving laid Naruto down, but not before planting a gentle kiss on his lips. She then vanished in a swirl of leaves to report to the Hokage about what had happened. Sakura glaring at where Anko had been decided to set some traps and watch over her teammates. This got her inner thinking that maybe if they did this it would impress Naruto-kun, and then he'd ask her out. Both versions of Sakura giggled as this plan was perfect, in their minds at least. To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.